He said he had a golden mirror, and if you look into it just right, it would show you the beginning of time. And what's more, he was telling the truth. I know it sounds like the kind of thing religions would say if they could muster as much creativity as a mediocre fantasy writer, but as esoteric as a golden mirror that sees through time and ascends to the heaven sounds, it's a real thing, and I got to see it a couple weeks ago when we were in L.A. And because scientists have to use straight-sounding names when they want to command gazillion-dollar budgets, they passed up on all the cool names like the Gilded Mirror of Zerblaxia and just went with the James Webb Space Telescope. So first of all, let me geek out about this a little. One of our listeners works for Northrop Grumman, which is the prime contractor for the James Webb. And while it's not exactly on public display, apparently the company encourages their employees to bring people in and show it off. Yeah, you know, probably so that somebody will think of something other than exploding brown people when they think of Northrop Grumman. So when he heard that we were coming to L.A. for a god-awful movies record, he reached out with an invitation to see it. And, of course, I jumped at the opportunity. Now, you'll often hear the James Webb described as the planned successor to the Hubble, and I guess in a sense that's right, but it gives people the wrong impression of the thing. It's not just going to be the bigger and better version of Hubble. It is going to be bigger, and it is going to be better. Uh, where Hubble's primary mirror is less than eight feet across, the mirror on the James Webb, once they're all unfolded and shit, is over 21 feet. And it's going to manage that despite having half the mass of the Hubble. But it's also just a qualitatively different thing. Where Hubble looked at shit in the range of visible light, the Webb will be an infrared telescope. See, visible light gets scattered by dust clouds and obscured over vast distances in ways that infrared doesn't, which means that, among other things, the James Webb telescope will be the first telescope capable of directly imaging exoplanets. It also means that it'll be able to pierce the distance limitations of the Hubble and see further back in time than we've ever been able to see before. As the folks who are tasked with making this sound good to the scientifically illiterate taxpayers that have to fund it say, it'll take the universe's baby pictures. And let me tell you, it is a damn impressive thing to look at. It's, it's like, it, it's two stories tall. Its main feature is comprised of 18 hexagonal mirrors arranged like a honeycomb over top of this massive iridescent sun shield. It's beautiful. And, and because apparently it's the most reflective substance when it comes to infrared radiation, the mirrors are made of gold. Or Actually, there's a super fine gold coating over beryllium, if I recall correctly. But one way or the other, when you look at this motherfucker, you're looking at an impossibly smooth golden mirror that's bigger than a goddamn elephant. So as we're standing there taking this motherfucker in for just a minute, I started feeling sorry for religious people. That awe and reverence that we were all experiencing was something that they never get to feel. I mean, I know they accuse us of robbing the world of solemnity, but that's only because they lack imagination. I mean, sure, they can experience awe, but the best a church can offer you is like, you know, look how high up that vault goes, or look how many little figures they managed to carve into that pillar. And sure, that shit's cool. I like looking at that stuff, too. It impresses me. But the appearance of the James Webb telescope, as stunning as it was, wasn't at all the source of the awe. Hell, even the exacting precision or the 20-plus years of engineering wasn't the driving factor. The awe that nearly brought me to tears that afternoon was the knowledge that I was looking at something that was going to bring us closer to understanding the universe. I was watching the perpetual quest for truth play out. I mean... You know, I'm sure that religious people would be awed if they looked at this thing. It's damn impressive. Hell, it's even gilded, and they love that shit. But they could only appreciate the physical substance of the thing. You know, they could be impressed by its size or its beauty or how precisely ground the mirrors were, but they couldn't feel what I felt. You can't hold truth in that kind of reverence if you've already cheapened it with superstition. Really, for religious people, there's already an ultimate truth, and they know what it is. And to be honest, it's pretty fucking banal. You know, so for them, science isn't so much pushing a frontier as filling in the blank spaces on a map that they've already been to the end of. For you and I, the apex of the natural is the apex. For them, it's just the threshold to the supernatural. And that means that even when we stand on the same ground as the believers, you and I stand taller. 